how it works. We're going to ask everyone to introduce themselves, take in turn, tell you uh, what, your name, what you're running for, a little bit about your background, uh, and then we'll oh, I'll start asking questions. This is a forum to benefit our readers and our viewers, and so this is not a debate forum where there's necessarily equal time. We'll try to be as fair as possible, but it's really an effort to, to have a conversation. We encourage folks to be interactive, politely interactive, because this is Oregon after all. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how it'll work. And um, there we go. So we're going to begin by asking the incumbent to introduce himself and um, uh, get things rolling. Congressman? My name is Robert Blumenauer. I um, represent the city of and I have. Um, been privileged to represent most or all of this district for uh, many years now, and I'm looking forward to an opportunity to perhaps uh, have another two years in that effort. Where are you from originally? <coughs> I am from Portland, born mm -hmm. in the 3rd Congressional District, uh, both high school uh, undergraduate and a law degree, both from Lewis and Clark, so I'm, I'm kind of a lifer. And for folks who may not know your political history in the area, uh, a rundown of the offices you held, perhaps? Well, I uh, became involved in the political process uh, as a college student working to lower the voting age. I uh, directed the state campaign and worked on the National Constitutional Amendment, got interested. This was all politically involved. I served in the Oregon legislature uh, in the 70s. Uh, I guess I'm I served eight years as a Multnomah County Commissioner. For ten years, I was Portland's Commissioner of Public Works and have been for almost, I guess, 18 years now, uh, privileged to serve the 3rd Congressional District in Congress. My name is James Spukel, and I'm representing the Independent Party, the Republican Party, and the Constitution Party as their candidate to represent the 3rd Congressional District. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from originally? I was born in Madison, Wisconsin, um, when moved back east to Virginia when I was a kid, went to school in the Northeast, spent a little time in New York City, came out here in 1991. To do what? Practice law. Okay. And you've been doing that ever since? Doing that ever since. You've run for office before? Uh, yes, I ran for office a couple times in the state legislature out when I lived south of Canby, uh -huh. and I ran for attorney general in 2012. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Google. I think Mr. Rio makes a persuasive case <coughs> that the military industrial complex is out of control. Congressman Blumenauer has been in office for 18 years. Mark Twain once said that you had to change politicians just like you had to change diapers for the same reason. However well intentioned Congressman Blumenauer once was, he is no longer standing up against the banks, against the military industrial complex, against the development of sort of a 1984 surveillance state. Instead, he is voting to help the bankers fund the development of the surveillance state and essentially waste our blood and treasure on, on the sands of the Mideast in a context that makes no sense at all. Is there a specific vote you would point to? I could point to the vote extending the protect. The Dodd-Frank bill itself demonstrates some sort of total failure to get hands on what the problem is. The problem is that you can't have banks to take deposits and then going out and gambling with them. And the Democrats and the Republicans, in sort of bipartisan idiocy, in 1999, I think, repealed the Glass-Steagall Act restraining that activity. Mm -hmm. And we now have a situation where Congressman Blumenauer and many others have sort of extended a regulatory apparatus that makes the government partners in crime with the banks. The banks go out and steal billions of dollars, and then they pay millions or tens of millions in fines. But they're allowed to do all the things that generate the problems. And the right answer was, when people went out and gambled and lost, they deserved to cease to exist as institutions. These institutions should have gone into bankruptcy court. Instead, the federal government bails them out over and over again to the point where the entire economy has now been financialized. And instead of just 8% of the economy being sort of financial companies, it's up to 20-something percent. And the debt gets higher and higher, and the interest gets higher and higher, and the entire economy is being ground into the ground, and the middle class is being destroyed by people who pretend 
pretend to be protecting it like the congressman, where he voted to extend protection, that is bailouts, to the okay. U.S. branches of foreign banks. I don't remember the site. I could get it to you afterwards. It's on my website. And then afterwards he said he did that by mistake, and he should have waited until it was part of a comprehensive scheme of reform. And what I took that to mean is that we were going to do something that didn't make no, any sense. We're going to bail out these people. But if we bury it in these giant thousand-page bills, no one will notice what we are doing. And this entire system of these thousand-page bills has become corrupt and unworkable. And it is this entire incumbent class there that has abandoned the old-fashioned method of identifying a problem, having hearings on it, passing a statute to correct the problem. That's all gone now. We have like these two criminal gangs, and they come in, and they assemble these thousand-page bills, and you know, are you on the red team or the blue team? Vote for this or don't vote for this. We need to have people in Congress who have the courage to stand apart from these sort of leadership interests that are not governing in a useful way and saying, we're not going to do things that way. We're going to address things in bite-sized chunks, we're going to solve a problem and move on, because there's too much corrupt stuff buried in these thousand-page bills. And specifically, how would you be different? I would vote no. Okay. All right, Mr. Bicol, what, what's your response to the Congress's position on marijuana legalization? What would you, do, if anything, what would you do differently? Now, I really don't like this issue because I think that we have critical problems with the economy and the future of our young people is being totally destroyed through economic policies that are insane and so forth and so on. And what we have is the Democratic Party and Congressman Miller coming here, look, we've got a little little bobble here, you know, we're going to legalize the marijuana. You know, well, I, I you may not here. like the issue, but it's right here in front of us, so I'm going to ask you again. What's He's right, okay? okay. I, I don't believe that people are cows of the government who can only eat what the government says and smoke what the government says. And so, so, yes, he, he's right on this issue. That's fine. But the important issues of you know, fixing an economy and a Federal Reserve that has gone berserk and has set the interest rates at essentially zero, so the entire productive enterprise of capitalism is being destroyed. And so old people can't afford to retire anymore because they have no savings income. And young people can't get jobs because the old people aren't retiring. And the whole economy being hollowed out. And the real income falling every year. And the share of Americans owning businesses falling every year. You know, a few marijuana businesses aren't going to stop that. OK. You've been very patient. Your turn to ask one question of any candidate here at the table. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to put my question to Congressman Blumenauer. Um, there's a famous speech given by Mario Salvi in Berkeley in the 60s, in which he said that you know there comes a time when the operation of the machine is so odious that you have to put your hands on its levers and you have to stop it. And I think you agree that that the spending that the House of Representatives is engaging in is uh, misallocated, you just said so a few minutes ago. And yet we see nothing but continuing resolution after continuing resolution, after, rather than breaking things down into bite-sized chunks. You know, you're on the Ways and Means Committee. You, is there a question here? You have influence here. Why can't you exercise more influence to break spending down to the point where there can be up and down votes on discrete agencies instead of just kicking the can down the road over and over again. So what you're saying is you can get a higher level of spending that includes a lot of stupid stuff through a bad process rather than working with the Republicans to craft the bills block by block. The Republicans won't bring a bill to the floor because they can't agree amongst themselves. If we could legislate, if they'd work with us, there are a number of things. I mean, I, this is, I actually have worked with Paul Ryan, for instance. What did you do when there was a war in Vietnam, Mr. Blumenauer? I know we're about the same age. There was a draft. Um, I was a college student. I protested against the war. Uh, I, my first campaign was Gene McCarthy in 1968. Did you get uh, a draft number? Uh, I, I was not. I got a high draft number. I was not drafted. I... Uh, did not go to Vietnam. It would have been a very difficult decision for me. I had a family, and I was violently opposed to the war. I don't know that I could have, could, in good conscience, had served. 
lot of issues about conscientious objection. I didn't think I could apply because there are. I spent two years in federal pen for refusing to work. So you do a public virtue advertising for clean water, while in Washington you legislate for Northwest Naturals fine to be reduced for their dumping of PCBs, and oh, your present uh, spouse is on the board of directors. Are you talking specifically about the Superfund, the Harvard? I, I yeah. assume he's talking about. Well, I'm that. talking about know, recent. What he's talking about didn't happen. Well, specifically so about Northwest Natural. PCBs. This magazine has reported on it on several occasions. Like you said, the Democrats are dithering on the environment and handing it over to just corporations. Just so get a grip. Uh, that's what this you said. Is, this has been a challenge. Your guilty it's pleasure. My guilty pleasure. Porter. I'm sorry. Black Butte Porter. Black Butte Porter. Or certain other porters. McMiniman has a new one now with habanero pepper and chocolate in it. A porter that is just excellent, and I highly recommend. Right. <laughs>